Harlem's amazing. For value's sake, you can get a lot of space and retain a history and an appreciation of it. We found this place. We loved the fact it had solid bones. When it was built in 1904, it was a speakeasy for yeah, Irish mill workers. It's a really great place to live. What's harder, raising two four-year-olds or renovating a home? Oof. The hardest is doing both simultaneously. Yeah. Because kids need naps and renovations need noise. One of the challenges of a townhouse is the way people lived at the time was very much partitioned into separate rooms. You had front parlors and rear parlors and dining rooms and butler's pantries. There's an instinct to really want to break out all the walls and open the whole floor up. But of course, it can often feel like a bowling alley if you're not careful. So one of the things we did was make sure that we were always creating a sense of discrete rooms that flowed into each other, but they always have a little bit of a break between them. It's a very important thing to make sure the house still feels like it belongs, that we haven't done anything to it that makes it feel overly modernized. Neil and David collect art that's more mysterious and darker and moody, and so the house kind of reflects that vibe. We love collecting art. We've been doing it for about nine years now. Before we were even laying anything out in the blueprints, we just made sure that there were spaces for these things that they had. There's a talking parrot, there's a few art pieces that are recessed into the wall that have boxes behind. When we were on our honeymoon in Barcelona, we passed by this crazy little shop that had all these amazingly weird things pillows with creepy women, and in the windowsill was this strange taxidermy rat. My dad gave me a bunch of money for our wedding, and he's like, go us spend- Us gave us. No, it was for me. A bunch. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> he uh, said, go buy something in Barcelona with it. <laughs> and so I ended, <laughs> he chose that. David is actually a trained chef, so when we started working on the kitchen, it was all about that big island and making sure everyone can gather while he's working. They're always worried about things being too precious because it is a family. Neil requires everything to serve a purpose. It needs to function, and David is different and he just wants things to look nice. I really love this room. It feels homey, it's warm. We watch TV here, we hang out with the kids, we read books every night on this oh, couch. Really? Yeah, David wanted this room to feel kind of like an adventurer's club filled with stuff on the walls and oddities, which fits right into my world because I love magic and he likes taxidermy and I like sideshow carnival freaks. This room is awesome. Neil has a magic office and in order to get into the magic office, you have to press a little button on a poster that pops open a poster that's hanging on the wall that reveals a door to go inside. At the front door of the house, we have an apothecary cabinet. We designed it to have secret compartments. When people are leaving, each person could pick a drawer and take something, whether it be like a 25 cent ring or a gift certificate or something. At the end of the day, kids can be crazy, but then they come and cuddle with you and it's all wonderful. And with renovation, it all can be crazy. And then at the end of the day, you're sent a bill and you have to sign a gigantic check. I think I like kids better. <laughs>